The First Coast is watching 17 JKS. In 10 seconds, stand by. Live from Channel 17, this is First Coast News. Good evening. Christy has the night off. The Super Tuesday vote has proven to be a big win for Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton. As predicted, Clinton swept the southern and border states, and President Bush has doused GOP challenger Pat Buchanan. Mr. Bush is expected to regain some of his waning confidence from Georgia's primaries, which featured a protest vote. We'll have a complete look at the way the nation voted in just a few minutes, but first, a look at the state. Here in the Sunshine State, a surprisingly big victory for Bill Clinton. Clinton made an exceptionally good showing here along the First Coast. Richard Rose has spent most of the night at the Democratic headquarters. He now joins us from our newsroom with a report on Super Tuesday vote. Richard, how'd it go tonight? Well, the party was over early at the Democratic headquarters at the Jacksonville Hotel. It was practically deserted by 10 o'clock because the networks projected so early that Bill Clinton would be the winner. And uh, the big cheer went out from the Bill Clinton crowd when the news came in. The Brown people took solace from the fact that Brown will be able to get some delegates with the support he received. And the Songus folks were glad that Songus won in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. This is a respectable showing, good showing. We're happy. So now, for you, what's next as a supporter of him? What do you do to try and make him the, the candidate who was picked at the nomination? Well, the nomination? I think we, we move on to the primaries, doing what we can to support him in the primaries in the northern states, where we think he's going to do real well. 15 percent, uh, is that satisfactory for you? That's the bubble. Uh, if we can get the 15 percent or better, we've got a congressional delegate, and that's what's really exciting. If he does make it as far as to getting the nomination, the Republicans are probably pretty sure to bring up uh, the problems that we've heard about in the past. Is, uh, are you expecting this to be a big drag-out nasty fight, and how do you combat that? Well, I think we're expecting them to do that, and um, he'll just do ha as he did before, and it won't be a problem for him, and he'll be able to... Uh, come out of it shining like he has. He'll, he'll try to refocus the debate on the issues. And... That may, may be the case, but with uh, Bill Clinton about one-third of the way towards gaining the nomination, the Republicans, particularly President Bush, who appears to be gaining the nomination of his party, will be focusing on the issue of character with Bill Clinton. And you can imagine that the, the questions of Jenny Flowers and the questions of whether or not Clinton evaded the draft will come up again. Bush may be expected to try to paint Clinton as a womanizer and a person who waffled on the draft. Bush himself, a person who can point to a proud World War II record as a combat flyer. So I don't think we've heard the last of that, and we'll soon find out this summer whether or not Clinton has indeed survived those questions of character. Now, for the Republican side of things here around Duval County and Clay County, we have Pete Christensen live at Republican headquarters. Well, Richard, the party was over here early as well. Everyone has gone home, but surprisingly, no one walked away feeling like a loser. Bush supporters were very happy with their 69% showing here in Jacksonville, and Buchanan supporters were almost as happy with their 31%. They say even though the numbers would indicate they were losers, they say they have plenty to celebrate. Well, I, I'm very pleased. If, if you'd have given me 30% yesterday, I'd have taken it in a heartbeat. And at 31 or 32, we're very pleased. We're very pleased. Okay, and again, maybe paving the road for 96. Well, I, I think a lot of this is paving the way for 96. He's, he's developing an organization across the country. He's got volunteers ready to work for him. So I think he's, he's, he's setting himself up very nicely for 96. And realistically, Buchanan... Realistically, Buchanan supporters have only 1996 to look forward to because they, tonight, Mr. Buchanan did not win any delegates, did not win any primaries. His uh, campaign is basically about as far as it will go. Now the uh, Buchanan supporters say further on down the line they will support President Bush in his re-election bid. Glenn and Linda? Thank you very much, Pete. Going into Super Tuesday, Florida was predicted to be the wild card state. But there have been no major surprises here. Joan Murray has that story. On the 18th floor of the Capitol, as election returns started coming in, it was clear Bill Clinton was emerging the front runner. Out of 490 precincts, Clinton has 53 percent and Songus has 29 percent. Bush supporters cheered over his lead, but couldn't ignore Buchanan's strong showing again. George Bush, 66.4 percent. Pat Buchanan, 33.6. Uh, in the final count, whenever the, the real games are played, 
President Bush is going to be out front, way ahead. Paul Sanga supporters were hoping for a little more in Florida, but admit getting started late probably hurt. What matters to me is that he's had an opportunity to get his message across, and I hope that his ideas will take root in this country because I think we've got some serious problems. Clinton supporters say Florida has given him the green light to win the nomination. He's up by more than 15 points. I think it's a clear mandate, and I think that'll carry out into the West and to the Midwest. Despite Clinton's victory, Sanga supporters say the race isn't over yet. In Tallahassee, Joan Murray reporting. And taking a look at counties around northeast uh, region of Florida, we see that the uh, pretty much held trend. In Baker County, Clinton took 64% of the vote, Bush with 62%. In Clay County, Clinton 52 percent, Bush with 71. Clay County voters tonight also deciding on electing rather than appointing school superintendents. In St. John's County, Clinton with 43 percent of the vote, Bush with 63 percent. In St. John's, Clinton with 43, Mr. Bush with 63. In Putnam County, Clinton at 60 percent, Bush at 63 percent. In Nassau, Clinton with 56, Bush with 66 percent. In Duval, Clinton took the vote with 53 percent support. President Bush took 69% of the vote, and in Duval County, there are also 3,500 absentee votes. They will be counted tomorrow. And political analyst Steve Baker joins us now to give us some insight into the 92 vote. All right, uh, Mr. Baker is in our newsroom, and uh, we hope to get him in just a second. And if he does pop up, we will ask Mr. Baker about uh, all the activities that went on today, not only around Florida, but around the country as well. So, uh, Mr. Baker, if you're there... No, Mr. Baker. Okay, so we will move on. Maybe we'll uh, come back to that. Yes, we will. The votes are in from the majority of the polls around the country. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton took the Democratic race in Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, Texas, Florida, Louisiana, and Missouri. Songas took the vote in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Delaware. And a clean sweep for President Bush, winning the GOP vote in Massachusetts, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, Texas, Florida, Delaware, Louisiana, and Missouri. We go back to the newsroom now for our Steve political Baker. analyst, Steve Baker. Mr. Baker, thanks for joining us tonight. Mr. Baker, your thoughts on what you've seen tonight, uh, and especially the impressive vo uh, vote, uh, the win by Bill Clinton? Well, it was a very impressive showing by Bill Clinton. It does mean that he will be the, the candidate to beat. Uh, he will be uh, nominated or named by the media as the front runner, and as such, that'll demand a great deal of media attention. Hmm. Given that, do you think tonight's big win for Clinton will now give him the edge in getting the Democratic nomination? We'll give him a great deal of edge in soliciting more money. And because of the high cost of campaigns, that's one of the really preconditions for gaining the nomination. I think for a while it will give him a very big edge. And if he can sustain that in next week in Illinois and in Michigan, uh, it would seem that he probably would develop enough momentum to continue on to the nomination. What are your thoughts? Can he sustain it next week in those two states? Because labor will probably be a big issue up there. That's true. Both states have uh, strong labor back, strong labor unions. Uh, both states have good, uh, solid political organizations. And Clinton seems to be more tuned in to these organizations than any of the other Democratic candidates. What about Pat Buchanan? How much longer are we going to see him hanging in there? I suspect he'll still be in there for a while. He has a message to say. Uh, his people keep emphasizing that it's a struggle for the heart and soul of the Republican Party. As such, they won't take uh, a very practical approach which might suggest pulling out relatively early. And uh, I suspect that as long as the money holds out and until George Bush gets the, uh, enough to assure the nomination, that Patrick Buchanan will stay in the race. Thank you very much for joining us, political analyst Steve Baker. Thank you. Well, from the Southern-dominated Super Tuesday candidates, now shift gears, as we said, to the Midwest vote, where a delegate-rich contest awaits them in Illinois and Michigan. Now, Tuesday the 17th is primary day in both of those states. For the Democrats, 164 delegates are at stake in Illinois, 131 in Michigan. As for the Republican race, Illinois offers 85 delegates, Michigan 72. We'll be right back. I voted for Bush. Why? Uh, simply because uh, I don't think he could do any worse than what he's already done. And Buchanan really doesn't stack up to him, so I voted for Bush. I voted for Clinton. We all think he's the best of what we got.
A sad farewell for a Palm Beach deputy today. He was killed in the line of duty last week. More than a thousand officers from around the South paid their respect to 35-year-old officer Kevin Matthews. He was struck and killed by a car last Friday while directing traffic following a rally for Paul Songus. The Democratic presidential candidate and his wife Nikki attended the memorial service, staying close to Matthews' widow, Diana. The deputy will be buried in his home state of Ohio. The controversy over the check-bouncing scandal in Washington is heating up again. Tomorrow, the House Ethics Committee is to release a report on its investigation into the overdrafts and recommend which names of those who bounce checks should be made public. It's expected the committee will recommend releasing the names of only the worst offenders, but others are insisting on full disclosure. A citizens group is launching an ad campaign to support the release of all the names. The state of Florida will once again allow the training of midwives. The House approved a bill this afternoon that reactivates the practice of lay midwifery, which had been limited since the state stopped the training of midwives eight years ago. Under the bill, which the Senate will take up tomorrow, people who undergo three years training programs will be able to assist women who are judged to have low-risk pregnancies in home deliveries and deliveries in birthing centers. Currently, there are only 33 midwives practicing in the state of Florida. So, Brad, you say we can put the umbrellas away and get out the blankets. Yeah, get out the bl blankets, get out the jackets. I hope you remember where you put your sweaters because we're certainly going to need them. I can't believe it. It was in the 80s last weekend. Well, and it was in the 80s the last couple of days. And for the past couple of weeks, we've had a taste of summer. But now comes a taste of winter again on the first coast as a cold front is about to make its way through the area. That's when all the showers and thunderstorms were today. Yeah, they just preceded that cold front, and here it comes. Right now, let's check out our current conditions. At the National Weather Service, the front is not through yet. Skies are cloudy, temperature 61. That's the coolest we've been all day, by the way. Humidity at 87%, barometers holding steady. Winds are southwest. Uh, as soon as they shift around northwest, you'll know that the front is coming through. 63, the low this morning, made it up to 76 this afternoon. Now, well, how much rain do you get in your neck of the woods? About an inch at Mayport. If you live out at the beach, most everybody picked up about that amount. Uh, about three quarters of an inch on the south side, anywhere from 75 to 85 hundreds. Uh, just under nine tenths at J Jacksonville International. Normandy, Venetia, and also Ortega Forest coming in with an inch or better. Six tenths at Cecil Field and AS Jacks. 82 hundreds. Well, the forecast for tonight uh, is going to show us that most of the showers have ended across the area. This big batch of rain has moved offshore, and that's it for the rain. The one thing we have to watch for is the cold front just to the west of us, and that's going to pick up the winds throughout the evening. What do we have to look forward to? Mostly cloudy skies, breezy and cool, 45 to 50 for the low temperatures. Now, on the weather map, here's the cold front as it sits just to the west of us, just on our heels. It's about to make its way through, and tomorrow it uh, will be well offshore and skies will begin to clear. I think we'll call it partly sunny tomorrow. It'll be breezy as high pressure fills in behind the front. We'll see winds out of the northwest rather strong, too. So partly cloudy to partly sunny skies, windy and cool, 58 to 65. That's all we'll make it up to for the high temperatures. On the waters, northwesterly winds at 20 knots, choppy on the inland waterways, low tide at 703. Now, the outlook for Thursday, really not much of a change. In fact, high pressure going to stay dominating the weather picture. That means sunny skies across the first coast, but cool temperatures. In fact, for Thursday morning, we could see some frost well inland. If you have any tender vegetation, you might want to bring it inside because the shock of the 80 degree temperatures dropping down to the mid 30s is going to be a lot for these tropical plants. 60 tomorrow under mostly sunny skies. Brilliant sunshine on Thursday, 63, 66 on Friday. And right now the weekend looks good with highs making it up to, well, the mid 70s by Sunday. Let's recap the forecast for tonight. Partly cloudy and breezy, 49 for a low. Windy and cool tomorrow, high of around 60. So. If you like the cool stuff, it's coming back to join us. Why is it every time I have company, it either rains or it's cold? Your sister's not having very good luck, I is she? Know. I swore to her it would be good weather this time. Last time she was here, it rained all four days. you got to get uh, your order in early for something like this. Huh? I thought I did. Okay. All right. Well, Thanks, next Brad. time. We'll be right back. <laughs> Um, well, after weighing the issues, um, there's a lot of things I agree with Buchanan on, um, but then again, there's a lot of things I disagree. So mainly just to send a message, I think, was my purpose in voting for Buchanan. Okay.
this one's for all you skiers out there. If you want a little more challenge, but a little less hassle, you might want to try snow runners. With snow runners, you just snap on one piece of equipment. No more lugging around heavy skis and poles. With this innovative toy, you get blades and snow boots all rolled into one. It's really like ice skates. You know, it's the same way. An ice skate doesn't slip on the ice. It grabs right into it. So it's a lot more like ice skates than skis, really, when you get right down to it. Snow runners apparently make turning easier. But like anything else ski-related, it's not cheap. The price ranges from $200 to $250. And by the way, that's a European invention. Yeah, and you probably can still fall and break you. You know what? <laughs> I was going to say, but for half the price. Well, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah right. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Save it for the hospital bill, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, Bono's football, Bono's uh, baseball, and Bono's surgery. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, I mean, is Bo Jackson the miracle guy? I don't know, because if he comes back from this, I'm telling you. He is a miracle he man. He is a miracle man. Bo Jackson has certainly experienced a lot of things during his dual days of pro football and Major League Baseball. Add Bono surgery to that list. Jackson says he'll undergo hip replacement surgery within a few weeks and hopes to be sprinting within a year, although no athlete has ever undergone such surgery and returned to play professionally. Bo last appearance with the White Sox was in uniform yesterday, and that was likely it. Versus Baltimore, Bo gets the hit. His limp, the first, could very well have been his last. More than likely, there will be a hip replacement. Uh, I'll get rid of the pain. I'll get rid of the limp. And if Bo can't return to baseball, I have my health, I got my family, and I got people who love me for Bo, the person off the field. And during that operation, all or part of his diseased or damaged hip joint will be replaced with an artificial substitute made of metal and plastic. An unhappy Kirk Gibson in Kansas City hopes to be a happy camper in Pittsburgh. The Bucks picked up the 34-year-old outfielder for left-hander Neil Heaton today. Gibson spent just one season in Kansas City and had complained about his backup status. Unlucky number seven for the Orlando Magic tonight. The Magic hosting the Nuggets. They lost the seven straight. Otis Smith with a, with a nice move right here. 13 points for Otis tonight, but defense. The defense of the Kimbo Mutombo, the highlight of this night. Check out that block shot, a career high, 10 block shots for him. Anthony Bowie led the Magic with 24 points, but was thrown out of the game along with Denver's Todd Lipke for fighting. Couple of nice swings there with 531 to play. Denver wins it 89 to 82. That's only the fifth time in 30 road games that the Nuggets have been winners. Elsewhere in the NBA tonight, Miami over Boston, 108 to 100. Charlotte beat Minnesota, 105 to 96. Cleveland 102, Phoenix 100, Indiana over Washington 101 to 91, and San Antonio by Atlanta 103 to 92. Well, the only talk around the National Hockey League these days is strike talk. Management and labor are getting nowhere. Both sides met for nine hours yesterday to no avail. Of concern to the owners is players' salaries. Now check this out. 70% of the league's profits come from gate receipts. 85% of those profits go for players' salaries, and with no major network contract, well, you can see the owners are filling the pinch. And speaking of problems, rumors are the Hartford Whalers may be taken over by the league. There are alleged fraud charges aimed at one of the minority owners of that team. Ray LeBlanc, you remember him from the U.S. Olympic team, well, made his debut for, for the Blackhawks tonight, taking on the San Jose Sharks. And a couple of nice saves there by LeBlanc. He's 27 years old and certainly like to, to do well in the NHL. Last check, the uh, Blackhawks were winning the game 1-0 in the second period. You know, it really amazes me that that league has continued on like it has without that television contract. It is amazing. Something is going to have to happen because uh, I think they're going to have to have... I mean, if, the, if you're talking about competing, I mean, they're, they're talking about salary arbitration like baseball. Well... Mm -hmm. That, that means, that right, it, it, exactly. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen this negotiation, but uh, you got to have more money for that. I mean, okay. and uh, you got to be able to compete like that. Okay. Thanks, sir. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. Okay. I vote for him because I think he's still the best candidate available. Pat. What is his name? Buchanan? Because I don't want to send a message to George. I didn't know we went. His way's changed. 
Visit the Southside Merchants today. The Hong Kong Trading Company has a tremendous selection of Far Eastern specialties, including fresh baked goods, hard to find produce, and frozen oriental foods, unique gifts and furnishings. Hyperdrive Computers and Electronics is your total system support headquarters, including on site or walk in service. Your satisfaction always comes first. Open seven days a week. The Dragon is a beautiful new Chinese restaurant serving fine oriental cuisine, delicious lunch specials for $3.99, full service, and a friendly atmosphere. All of these fine merchants are on Southside Boulevard, just three blocks south of Beach. And we'll take a quick update now on tonight's Super Tuesday votes around the country. Here in Florida, Bill Clinton took the Democratic vote and President Bush the GOP nomination. Clinton also won in Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, and Missouri. Paul Songas took the votes in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Delaware. And President Bush took the GOP vote in Massachusetts, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, Texas, Delaware, Louisiana, and Missouri. A clean sweep. And finally tonight, if you didn't get out to vote today, this story might make you feel a little guilty. It's about a young lady in Orlando who hasn't missed a vote since 1920. At 104, Mary Anderson is the state's oldest voter, at least the oldest to actually get out and vote today. Mary says it's not just a privilege, but a duty to vote. Mary remembers when women had to fight for the right to vote. Well, after studying the candidates, she was ready to exercise her constitutional right. Who would you vote for? Well, I'm not telling you that. That gives it all away. Well, yeah, but Mary did give it away. After a little coaxing, Mary said she voted for Bill Clinton. Why? Because Mary said Bill is pleasant looking. That's why. <laughs> and I guess that's probably good enough reason, probably a better reason than most people around the state of Florida today for voting. I'll tell you. Hey, at least you got out there and did it. That's right. That's it for us tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night, everyone.